and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me, Lord our God. Mighty God, have mercy on us. Give us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your to God in the highest and, and on earth peace to people of good will we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great Seated 
at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who founded all commands of your sacred law upon love of you and love of neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, let us beset the just one because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death. For according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Smile. 
Behold, God is my helper. The Lord sustains my life. Freely will I offer you sacrifice. I will praise your name, O Lord, for its goodness. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from is it not from your passions that make war within your members you covet but do not possess you kill and envy but you cannot obtain you fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask but do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, 
What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved, as we continue to journey through this time of pandemic, we avail ourselves of the digital means of communications available to us. While we do have in-person worship in our parishes, the number of participants is necessarily restricted. Also, there are those who for health reasons, out of an abundance of caution, do not venture into any gatherings of any sort. So during these past 18 months, we have made available virtual Sunday Eucharist. Today, the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time, is also Catechetical Sunday in our Archdiocese. So our catechists, that is, those exercising the ministry of teaching the faith, will be installed in our various parishes at Mass today. Our Gospel today has Jesus predicting his passion for a second time. We recall how in the Gospel for last Sunday, Jesus was with his disciples at a place called Caesarea Philippi. And after asking them who they thought he was, and hearing Simon Peter say, you are the Christ, he made the first prediction of his passion. He does so now for a second time in our gospel today. He says, the son of man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the son of man will rise again. His glorification is by way of suffering. The suffering is not the end of the story, but it is definitely a part of the story. He is talking about his cross. And the cross is the symbol of glory by way of suffering. That is the story of Jesus, and that is our story too. As a global community, we have been bearing a cross for the past 18 months. It has come in the form of a pandemic. Because of it, we have come to experience lockdowns, curfews, safety protocols, virtual school, even virtual worship. And then came the vaccine, which offered us a margin of protection in a very uncertain and dangerous time. It was a ray of hope in a time of fear, a light at the end of a very confusing tunnel. Yet the response to the vaccine is bewildering. I wish to quote from a newspaper article written by a local physician, Dr. Gregory Pinto. He says in part, it is a tragedy beyond words and comprehension to see the scores of unvaccinated Bahamians and residents needlessly dying 
and being admitted to hospital critically ill. When COVID-19 vaccines are readily available in the Bahamas. Full vaccination ensures with near certainty that there will be no deaths from the dreaded COVID-19 scourge, as well as making required hospitalizations from severe COVID-19 disease highly unlikely. He goes on to say, people continue to refuse to take one of the available COVID-19 vaccines with a refusal to believe in the science behind these vaccines or modern medicine. But yet, they continue to flock to our decimated hospitals for life-saving modern medicine care when they are gasping for breath and facing death from COVID-19. And still again, Dr. Pinto says, I have heard countless harrowing stories from frontline physicians of seriously ill COVID-19 patients presenting to emergency rooms at the Princess Margaret Hospital or Doctors Hospital or South Beach Clinic, gasping for air with fear in their eyes, asking if it is too late to take the COVID-19 vaccine. Unfortunately, in that moment, with a positive COVID-19 diagnosis, the answer is sadly yes. It is too late. Patients often then ask with labored breath if anything can be done to save them. And in a collapsed healthcare system, the terrifying fact is that in far too many cases, little can be done. He goes on to conclude, getting vaccinated could save your life, the life of a loved one, and ultimately our nation. Friends, the current pandemic is the shape of the cross we must now bear. But the cross is not the end of our story. We have the will and the resources to come through this to the other side of this time of danger and uncertainty. With wisdom and with grace, we will do so. This past week, we had general elections the exercise was peaceful and orderly. To be sure, the voter turnout was very low by our standards. We now have a change of government. In the course of the political campaign, I saw a number of photographs of candidates from across the political divide standing together for a photograph in a gesture of friendship. These are very positive gestures. They taught a very important and significant lesson. To be a political adversary does not mean that you have to be an enemy. After the adversarial posture of a political campaign is over, we must still live in one community and work for the good of our community. After extolling and even exaggerating our differences in the campaign, now that the election is over, we must come together as one and live as one for the good of each of us and the good of our entire commonwealth. A vibrant democracy requires that. Let me point out that unity is a very important concern in our national symbols. Our national anthem begins with the words, lift up your head to the rising sun Bahamalan. Head is singular, not plural. It denotes unity. Our national coat of, coat of arms bears the motto, forward, upward, onward, together. The message of unity is clear once again. Our Pledge of Allegiance describes us as one people united in love and service. No explanation needed there. This post-election time is a time for unity. We offer our congratulations to our new Prime Minister and colleagues. We pray that they will lead us wisely and well. We offer our gratitude to our outgoing Prime Minister and colleagues. We thank them for their service of leadership to our nation. 
We thank all those who offered themselves for election to public office. Whether successful or not, it took courage and commitment to step forward as they did. This too is a sign of a vibrant democracy. Now that the election is over, as a sign of civic responsibility and civic pride, all political parties should make the effort to remove all their campaign signs and posters which have been distributed so generously throughout the streets of our community. That too would be a sign of a vibrant democracy. Let us now walk forward together for the good of our beloved Commonwealth of the Bahamas. As we speak of walking together, please note that Pope Francis has called the entire global Catholic community to a synod. The theme of this synod is for a synodal church, communion, participation, mission. It will begin officially in Rome on October 9th of this year, and it will be launched in our archdiocese and in dioceses around the world on October 17th. It will involve liturgies and listening sessions. The entire process will continue from this year, 2021, to October of 2023. You will hear much more about the synodal process very soon. In the meantime, my dear friends, let us remain mindful that we continue along the way of the cross in the form of a pandemic. So be safe. In this post-election moment, let us walk together as one people united in love and service. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, man and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, he rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge, living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who was spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now place our needs before the Lord as we offer our prayers of petition. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. With the intercession of the Blessed Mother, all teachers and administrators call upon the Holy Spirit to give them wisdom and guidance in the important work that they do, imparting knowledge. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. In thanksgiving for a peaceful election process, Lord, as we begin this new five-year term of service, the people, for the people, by the people, our leaders, they seek the counsel of the Holy Spirit as they make decisions for the common good of our people. We pray to the Lord. All who are sick and in distress may be comforted by those who care for them, and may they be encouraged by our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who have died may share fully in the joy of the saints in heaven, and may those who grieve for them have 
consolation. You remember Gregory Austin, Sylvia Coakley, Doris Taylor, Phyllis Storm. Then we pray to the Lord. The protection from the destructive forces of hurricanes this season, we pray to the Lord. And now, in silence, we place before the Lord whatever needs we most heavily upon us. All these things you pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, enable us to be more responsive to your word and to lead our lives in ways which give you praise and glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Praise the glory of his name. Our good, but of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith, may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory, that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices be pray join with this in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your Oh, Lord, 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 o
are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walks with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity, among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church, which is among us, in the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, with me, your unworthy servant, the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. Bear in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, St. Francis Xavier, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Take away the sin of the world. Grant us thy peace. Grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my room. Don't only say the word, word my soul shall be. This time, for the benefit of those joining us virtually and therefore unable to receive the Eucharist spiritually, we make an act of spiritual communion as is provided for us in a time like this by the church. We do so in these words. My Jesus, I believe that you are really present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things and I hunger to receive you. Since I cannot receive communion at this moment, Feed my soul, at least spiritually. I unite myself wholly to you now as I do when I actually receive you. Permit me never to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life, 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah.